Watch you guys got another video on how to fix the Ryzen 7000 series high CPU temperatures and high wattage usage. Now, if you've just built yourself a brand new computer with a Ryzen 7000 series CPU in it, you're pretty much going to soon find out that the temperatures are running pretty hot. Now, AMD have claimed that this is pretty normal for this particular type of CPU, but if you're like me and you don't want to be running a CPU at 95 Celsius, then this video is for you. You can run this at a lot lower temperatures and still get pretty much the similar results as you would get with high temperatures compared to low temperatures. So I know which one I prefer. Also, you're not using as much power with this particular type of setup. So I'm going to show you how we can do this. Now you can see that I am putting a water cooler on here. This is a previous build that I've done. If you haven't checked that build out, it's on my channel. Just go to the main page, you'll see it right there. And that is the build that you're looking at right here. Now it seems to be the case that all these Ryzen processors are causing issues with high temperatures. And this is nothing new because the Ryzen 3800X also had similar issues where you had to mess around with the voltage to get a much more stable CPU. So we're going to be using HW Info here. We'll get this installed on the computer and we'll also run Cinebench and you'll be able to see what the stock results are for this computer. We're going to run a Cinebench uh, score here so we can get a good idea of what we would get with the stock temperatures and also the wattage usage and things like that. So let's go ahead and start this up and straight away you can see it jumps straight to 94.4 and you can see here that is getting pretty hot but they say it's pretty normal. Now we're up to 95.1 and you know to me personally that is way too hot for my liking. 95.3 and again this is a brand new build and uh, it's under a closed loop water cooled system so it should be a lot cooler than that. We're not getting any thermal throttling here, which is also a good sign, which means A and D say that this is pretty normal. So when you look at the CPU uh, package power here, you can see it's 145.514 watts there running on this system. So all in all, I'm not too happy with those uh, particular uh, temperatures there. And I want to bring these down without losing too much power on the system and without losing too much performance. And that's what we're going to do. So we've got 19,594 score running on Cinebench here. So let's dive on into the actual uh, BIOS here. And we're going to make some changes to try and bring that down. Now, I've been fettling around with this for a while, trying to get it uh, to my liking. I'm going to go into AI Tweaker here. And basically what you're looking for is Precision uh, Boost Overdrive here. Once you go into here, you'll see that this is set to auto and you can change it to enabled enhancement manual. And there's also an AMD eco mode inside here. If you want to give that a try, you can do. So let me go ahead and I will get this set up. I'm going to do a bit of testing here so we can see whether we can bring these temps down to a much more manageable uh, sort of level really. So if you look inside here, there is one called manual and there is also one called enhancement, which the enhancements does have some presets inside here. If you look level 280 Celsius, you can see there is some uh, preset ones inside here if you want to set it up via this method. So choose which one suits you and uh, have a little mess around inside here. You're not going to blow up your computer. You just need to be a bit careful and just check some of the settings as you go. Because what's going to happen is if you've got this wrong, it's just not going to boot or you're going to end up with some crashing and things like that. And then you're going to have to keep coming back into the BIOS and making changes to where you find a happy uh, medium for your system. No CPU is the same. Some people are lucky and get a really good c CPU. And uh, the silicone lottery is real. And some people end up getting a really good one where they can push it. And some people have to uh, come down a little bit more than the others. So once we're inside here, I've got it set to enable for now. And we're going to go into the uh, area here where it says curve optimizer. Inside here, you'll see this is set to auto. You want to put this on to all cores here. So set this to all cores. And you can see it's set to positive at the moment. So set the all cores curve optimizer sign to negative. 
And then we need to go to all core curve optimizer magnitude. Now the number inside here is gonna differ from CPU to CPU. Now we're running a 7700X here. So the maximum you can put inside here is 30. Now, some people have got away with running with 30, and some people have had to go to as low as 15. And some people have got away with a nice sweet spot of 20. But we're going to start off with 30, which you should start off with 30, and go and do a bunch of tests and see whether that's stable. If it is, then you can leave it at 30. If you find it's crashing or it's not booting, you need to come back in and change this to a lower number, maybe 25 and or then 20 until you get that sweet spot. Now, once that's done and you found out that your number is what it is, you can leave that in there. I'm gonna go into this one here, which is a uh, platform thermal throttle limit. We're gonna set this to manual and we're gonna then set this to 85. This is the thermal throttle limit of 85 and that's what I wanna set mine to. I don't wanna go any higher than that. So that's where it's gonna sit at. Now, just a minute ago, we was looking at the Precision Boost Overdrive and we had that on enabled or you've got enhancements there. So depending on what you want to set yours to, but I'm going to set mine to a manual setting. But if you wanted to, you can see level 80 Celsius here. You could set this to something like that and you can also set uh, the thermal throttle limit to whatever you need down there. But I'm going to put this on manual because I want to set this to... Uh, an 85 setting on the PPT. So let me go ahead and we'll get this set to manual. But if you want to use the presets, you can do, but I'm going to go more manual for mine because I've got manual uh, platform thermal throttle limit to 85. So now we've got it set to manual, I'm going to set the PPT limit to 85. So PPT stands for package power tracking. Uh, this is the uh, socket power consumption and we've got this set to 85. So we should be good there. And uh, down here, as you can see, we've got everything how we want it now. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna save these settings and we're gonna restart the system. And then we're gonna test to see whether we get any problems like crashing or anything like that. So go ahead and you can save your settings and reboot. Now I've already done a bit of testing, so I do know that this will work, but just for the video, I'm gonna run the test here and show you. But I have booted backwards and forwards to the desktop and run multiple different tests to save you time. So I'm going to run a, a Cinebench here and we're going to open up HW Info here so we can see what happens with those temperatures. So let's go ahead and run the uh, benchmark here. And you can see already the temperatures are 67.3, uh, 67.9. And that is it. It's not going any higher than that. You can see down here, the CPU package power is also at 87 uh, watts or 87.103 watts, which is pretty good. And that's the maximum that it's going to. Uh, so it's just a couple of little watts over. Now, again, this HW info is not going to be 100% accurate. So there's probably a, a couple of degrees difference there. So that is probably bang on the 85. And uh, you can see here the score 18,928. Now, this will obviously change every time you run the benchmark, but you can see here there's not much difference between this and what it was when it was really erratic at 95 and 96 Celsius. So, we've managed to lower our temperatures and we've also managed to get our uh, wattage down, and we're also getting a pretty good score still. So, I'm happy with those results. You may not be, but I'm pretty happy with those. We are going to take a little hit, just a few hundred uh, points there. But again, in my opinion, it's much better to have a, a much lower temperature on the CPU. That means that is not getting too hot. Also, we're running less uh, wattage on there as well. And we're not getting any thermal throttling or anything like that. We're getting a pretty good performance from our CPU. Let me know in the comments section below what sort of results you've got if you have got a Ryzen 7000 series uh, chip. Now, this does affect the uh, Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 9s. So it's not just this processor. It does affect all Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. And you will need to go into BIOS and mess around with it if you don't want to run it at the stock 95 or 96 Celsius temperatures that AMD say is perfectly fine to run at.
Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. Hope this video has been helpful. Let me know in the comment section below what sort of results you've got. I'll be happy to read your results. And uh, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the very next video. Bye for now. <music>